Good morning, everybody. It's Max McAllister here from Traction Dynamics today. And I want to talk to people who have been customers who have purchased our TraxRite tie rod. Uh, what I want to inform you of is we found a potential problem with some of them. And so I'd like you to check your bike. So this is a uh, service bulletin, if you will, a video service bulletin, much like Honda might issue. Uh, for to inspect a part and make sure that yours is functioning perfectly and safely. So uh, what we found is is uh, the stud, the some of the studs that are in the tie rod have started to wiggle loose, and I'm going to show you how to check for that and how to inspect for it, how to update your tie rod if if need be, or, and how to replace it if need be. So we've got a whole kind of a system in place here, but. Uh, First, all we're going to look for is some sort of uh, play in the steering, and there should be none with our tie rod. Unlike with the factory Honda tie rod, where you'll find some rattle in the bar, uh, our rod should exhibit zero, per, zero uh, play at all. So there's two ways to get to that. Uh, one is if you happen to have a steering bridge safety, uh, steering bridge lock pin, you can insert that in the steering down into the bores where it's supposed to go come to the handlebar and check for play. Uh, you know, this is our motorcycle. It, it exhibits zero as it should. If you uh, if you don't have a steering bridge lock pin, the uh, poor boy way or the quick down and dirty way, you can do the same test. Turn your wheel all the way to the left, put it on the steering stop, pinch your foot against it so that it's held tight against the steering lock, grab the right handlebar and feel for play. Now, come over and watch. Uh, this handlebar is moving. That's flex. You'll, fe you'll feel play. Play is a click. You'll feel click, 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 click. So not flex. We're looking for actual mechanical play. Now, this bike exhibits none. If you feel some play, come and look in here. I'm going to point. <clears throat> uh, come around this side here, please. We're going to be looking right here at uh, where the stud goes into the tie rod on each end. So if you were to be checking for that, you're going to be looking for any movement there or at the other end of the tie rod. See if you can see in there, the other end. Okay, so that's what we're after. We're looking there. Now, uh, so if your bike doesn't have any rattle, any movement, anything, okay, it's still perfectly safe uh, to use. But we're still going to inspect it and we still want to update it. I've got a same way we've got a steering safety pin for the stock spindle. I've got a new rivet kit that's going to serve as a secondary uh, ultra fail safe uh, belt and suspenders, as they say, to keep your pants up. So there's a couple of ways to inspect your tie rod, and uh, one is with an inspection mirror. So let's say you're not a guy who's comfortable with tools and taking your bike apart. Uh, then a simple mirror. If you've got an inspection mirror, great. These are less than five bucks typically, or you might borrow a little makeup mirror from your wife. And what you're gonna do is come and hold the mirror in under the tie rod. And we're gonna be looking at the stud. Can you see that in there? All right, so this one's easy to show you. The front one's harder to, to, gonna be too hard to show you on video. It is more tricky to put a mirror in there and look at it. But now come over here and I'm gonna show you what it is I want you to look for. <clears throat> so here's a couple of example tie rods. And what we're looking for, look at these two places here on this tie rod. So, the stud is pushed through the ball in the tie rod, and then it goes through a special machine that stakes it. Um, now, uh, the vendor that makes these for us, uh, we found a couple of these loose, where the stud, here, I'll come out here, the stud can rattle or spin in the ball. So that's not safe, and uh, we want to make sure that your bike isn't doing that. So. When it's pushed through, it goes through a machine that smashes down the stud. It's called staking. It's a staking process. You can see this one. This one is properly staked. This one is not. This is an example of one that's not properly staked. So stay there one second. Um, <clears throat> now, so if you look with a mirror under your bike and you can kind of 
you, it's very hard to see an edge on the part, you, then yours is um, almost certainly nicely staked. Um, if you can clearly see these at this edge, then it's more questionable, called into question more. Here's another end to look at. All right, now, um, so let's say you're a better than average mechanic and you, or you bought your tie rod and you've installed it yourself. I highly recommend you just take it off, turn it over upside down, and we're gonna take a measurement. So with a vernier caliper, we're, just, we're going to measure the diameter of the stake. Uh, let me check my zero here. <clears throat> zero. All right. And take your time. But basically, any number over 410 is acceptable. 410 and greater, 410 thousandths of an inch is going to be acceptable. So in metric, uh, let's give you that number in metric, is 10.4 millimeters in metric. Anything bigger than that is going to be acceptable. So here's one, for instance, 401, not acceptable, okay? Look down here, this is another one I found, 407, not acceptable. So this has <coughs> uh, brought, this, brought this to our attention to, make sure, to improve this whole process that they're a company that makes this for Traction Dynamics. They've, got, they've now got a whole new process in place to triple inspect these. And, um, we'll have them batch serialized going forward. Now, if you find a rod on your bike that has a stud with 409 thousandths of stake or less, just uh, contact us and we're gonna replace that rod and take your rod back. All right, if, you, if your two studs are 410 thousandths or greater, it's perfect. You don't have to do anything ever again. If you'd like, just contact us and we're gonna mail you out a free kit to uh, put a secondary backup on it. So what I developed was a rivet that's gonna go down into the well of the stud and the hat of the rivet is wider than the bore of the ball. So if at any reason, you know, at 200,000 miles from now, your stud were to loosen up in any way, there's still a secondary hat on it. <coughs> so I made this sketch to show you more clearly what we're looking at. This arc represents the ball, and this is the stud that's coming through. So when they're brand new, or when they're at the assembly line and they come through, the studs push through the ball, this metal that's protruding up gets smashed down into a mushroom cap like, and that's what retains the stud in the, uh, in the spherical bearing, okay? So if these aren't adequately staked, then they're not held tight enough in the rod. 410 thousandths of an inch is the number. And in metric, I think I calculated 10.42 millimeters. All right, so we'll write that down there. That's gonna be that number. <coughs> now, our free kit we'll mail out to you uses, uh, you're just going to take a little drill and we're gonna drill any mushrooming out of this pocket here and then we're gonna tap, uh, uh, hammer a rivet down into that pocket. And I'll show you what that looks like. It uses a common 9 30 seconds uh, drill bit, which I'm sure most of you already have. If you don't, they're readily available at your hardware store for two bucks. If not, we will actually send you one um, if you don't have, have one or have access to one with a pair of rivets. All right, <coughs> the rivet, so what that procedure is going to look like, 930 seconds drill bit. Uh, we're just going to, we're just going to turn this pocket out. That's all there is to that. Literally as easy as that. This one staked better, but it's a little harder. There you go. When they're staked better, there's more meat to chop away. All right. Ball peen hammer. You're just going to place the rivet there. Tap it and now how you're holding this, depending on what you have available to you in your house, we have a vise with aluminum jaws here. You might not have that. If you have steel jaws, just make sure you're holding the shoulder here. That's fine. If you're a person that doesn't even have a vise, you can put the stud down onto uh, any hard surface you can find. The stud has a taper on it. 
you're not likely to damage it, but it is preferred if you have some way to hold it by, uh, by the uh, shank there. And just hit this in, and you'll hear it seat, and that's it. So once again, and then what that will look like, <coughs> that uh, will now match the arc of the ball precisely. And uh, you know, it won't interfere anywhere as the rod toggles. Um, the rod actually does not ever get to that extreme of an angle on the bike, but anyway, we designed it so that it would be that way. All right, so <clears throat> what uh, we would like you to do is um, inspect your bike and then uh, email us with your current mailing address. And uh, in case something has changed from where our records are at, we are, will mail you out a kit please tell us whether or not you need a drill bit included or not. So everybody's welcome to a free kit all around the world that's bought this over the last four years. Um, uh, you don't have to have it. If your two stakes are 410 or better, you don't have to have the rivet. It's just something we're doing as an extra safety precaution. If your rod is below 410, contact us and we're going to arrange a swap with you. All right. Now, uh, uh, I'm going to, you can send those all to me directly, max at traction.com. And I'm going to keep track of them and forward them around to our staff and uh, make sure everything happens. So I'm going to interact with each of you personally on this to make sure that you know your bike is as good as it can be. Max at traction.com is my email. So <clears throat> please inspect your bike and, uh, and let us know what you find. And we'll make sure that we get your bike, make sure it's 100% safe. So thanks a lot. My name's Max. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any friends that have purchased our tie rod, uh, please alert them to this so that they can check their bikes and get them updated as well. And uh, uh, please keep an eye on my channel for more great information in the future.